Her university alma mater named her Woman of the Century in 2000. My guest is a former youth pastor and high school teacher. Uh, the book we're looking at today is one of 48 that uh, she has written. She's a teen expert, founding editor of Brio magazine, 20 years, Susie Schellenberger, with Brio and Focus. Uh, I understand it's extinct? Well, because of the economy that hit everyone, Focus on the Family made the decision to discontinue teen ministry and they let our staff go about a year ago and stopped publishing the teen magazines. Oh, that so would I'm, be a grief. It, it was hard, um, but uh, I'm on my own now and have launched a new magazine that you know about called Susie <laughs> Magazine for oh, Teen let Girls. Let me just fan out these colorful, colorful covers. Uh, same target audience, teen girls, and I'm sure the same meaningful biblical encouragement. Absolutely, it's my way of being able to whisper spiritual truths and a lot of affirmation and positive encouragement to teen girls every single month. We have readers from around the world. Oh, it says a global sisterhood <laughs> for teen girls. Yeah. And isn't that sisterhood? It is. We don't need traveling pants, but we need connection, <laughs> right? Yeah. I can't believe you haven't been here before. The thing is, you have been here on 100 Huntley Street. I have. Via video. Ah. Girls Heart Point Conference. Yes, reports, you're right. And we've heard you speaking on the platform to girls. Yes. You just haven't done the couch. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. It's always been my dream to be a part of 100 Huntley Street. So thanks for having me. Long overdue. You come to us from a, kind of a Christian Mecca, hasn't it become? It kind of has. Colorado Springs, Colorado has, has around a hundred headquarters now of Christian ministries. So it's, it's just, it's exploded. What a great place yeah. to be. And what a great theme in a world that uh, is more threatening than it's ever been for teenagers. Absolutely. Uh, I wouldn't want to be a teenager right now, Moira. And we're, we're going to discover that uh, you've got the guys in mind too, not just the girls. But your personal story, oh man stellar or what it, it it doesn't look as if i mean very young you accepted christ by grade nine you were sharing your faith with others and it doesn't appear that you ever struggled waffled detoured or were distracted you know moira i i guess i was just fortunate to have two christian parents in the home uh, who raised my brother and i to love the church to get involved in the church at an early age and fell in love with jesus uh, you know i had a dad who would uh, take sunday afternoon naps but before he took a nap before he dozed off he'd grab the bible story book and read to me every sunday afternoon and those bible characters became my heroes. They just came to life for me and for my brother and had parents uh, who were praying and who would turn off the television and say, let's just gather around and have our own little family altar. And so I, I'm just, I was privileged to be able to, to be brought up in that kind of, of spiritual atmosphere and, and I have a spiritual heritage. So it, it's not that um, I've had a, a perfect life by any means, but it's just that at an early age, I fell so in love with Jesus and had such a strong spiritual heritage that I never had a, a desire to rebel. I never wanted to walk away from the Lord. I, I had good Christian friends and, and good Christian support system and, and didn't really have a need um, to look to the world for answers because I found that early on in Jesus. And even those Bible stories <laughs> uh, which your dad obviously brought to life, um, were so engaging that you say, oh, do we have to have a devotional time again? It was, yeah. it was interesting to you. It was. And, and you believed that God could make you one of those heroes too. I did. They came to life for me. And, and I had a mom and dad who were always instilling confidence saying, you know, you could do that. Well, you could do this. You could do that. And, and so I grew up believing, I guess I really could, not in my own strength, but with God's power, of course, within me. And um, so God has, has had his hand on my life and has kind of guided me in the way that he wants me to go. And I'm grateful for that. I don't take it for granted. It, was there a specific call or something that made teens the focus that you would choose? I don't know if there was a specific call, but I do remember back when I was in high school, having a burden on my heart for my other 
uh, teen friends in high school and also in junior high. And so the, the teen thing just really uh, took root in my heart. And then as I got into college, became a volunteer youth worker uh, for the youth group at my home church and began to work with those teens, then became a full-time youth pastor after college. Uh, and then after that, um, taught public school uh, for four years. And then after that, of course, launched the magazine for Focus on the Family and then now on my own magazine. So I've always kind of had a hand in the teen world, but I'm doing a lot now with women's ministries and speaking at a lot of women's events, probably just as much as I am teens, but I'm always going to have my hand in that teen world. Raising a spiritually strong daughter, you know, my daughter, your Brio fan, <laughs> uh, is in her first year of university. Wow. And reporting that in every class, every subject already, there's a moral challenge. Mm, I believe it. Her worldview is being shaken, yeah. not shattered, yeah. but challenged. Yeah. And uh, this this starts early. It really does, and and really the ideal is as parents, if we can start instilling within our kids when they're toddlers, what those values and standards and the high sense of morality is and a relationship with Jesus Christ, then by the time they go off to university, you know, we don't have to question, have I poured in enough? Did I lay a, a solid enough foundation? By that time, we'll know. Maybe you weren't like this because you just uh, had an amazingly, God had a plan and purpose and kept you strong in Him. But most teenage girls decide somewhere in that phase that, their mothers don't know anything, <laughs> um, have no idea what clothing should be, yeah. and the communication becomes a challenge. You talk about that. Well, and you've just hit the nail on the head because some of those really are some of the toughest issues that moms and daughters will struggle with during their teen years, communication problems. Um, a teen girl needs to know that her mom is hearing and listening to her. Now, Moira, you know as a mom, you, you're a multitasker. You can, you can be stirring spaghetti sauce, putting things up in the cupboard. Uh, you can put in a load of laundry and unload the dishwasher all the time while your girl is sitting across the counter talking to you and you can actually hear and get everything that she's saying but in her mind you're not really listening until you're focused in my eyes until I can really see you and so teen girls need to know mom isn't just hearing as she's doing all these other things but she's glued into me she's listening to me so communication is a big struggle between moms and daughters and then you hit the nail on, on the head with another issue and that's the whole issue of clothing uh, and, and it might not be about being immodest. Right. It might just be, this isn't who I am. Yes. This and this is cool. what's in style, absolutely. But a wise and savvy mom uh, will take her daughter to the mall at a, at a younger age, preteen, and uh, show her how to dress fashionably and still in style, but yet modestly as well. One of the best tricks in doing that is by taking her into the guys department, believe it or not, and getting a guy's undershirt because boys' undershirts are a lot longer than girls. Mm. And that way, if your daughter wa does want to wear a, a shirt that's too low or maybe a little bit too short or it's coming a little too high up, you can teach her how to layer her clothing so that nothing is showing and nothing's inappropriate. But a wise mom will learn that layering trick early on so her daughter daughter can dress hip, but yet still modest. Uh, another thing that a mom can do is, is when her daughter wants to try something on in the dressing room, say, you know, there are a few little modesty tests that we're going to run through with this piece of clothing. So let's just say, for instance, you're with your daughter and she tries on a shirt and you're both in the dressing room and you say, okay, now let's just pretend you're in youth group and you're praising the Lord and singing your favorite songs. You know, raise your hands and just really get into it. And if she does and the shirt comes up and you can see in her back, back area, you see your belly, you say, sorry, that didn't pass the modesty test. Or if she's trying on a pair of shorts for the summer, have her sit down in front of the full length mirror inside the dressing room and, and cross her legs and sit Indian style or pull her, her knees up to her chin and rest her hands on those. Can you see all the way up those shorts? If you can, sorry, it didn't pass the modesty test. So there are several little tests that you can give your daughter that will help her realize even before she leaves her bedroom, you know what, this is not going to fly with mom or with dad. So I'm not even going to try to put it on. It's just not going to, it's not going to work. And hopefully do it in a sort of a fun exploratory it's atmosphere, right. not a condemning one. Absolutely. You have lots of stories of parents who've done these kinds of things. Yeah. 
the, the, the right way and sometimes not the best way but right and, and you know I guess uh, for, for moms who are, are tuned in right now I, I don't want them to lose heart because a mom might be thinking she's written a book on a spiritually strong daughter but my daughter isn't in the faith my daughter walked away from the faith and and I don't know why because my husband and I raised her in the right direction and and so if a mom is tuned in right now I just want to encourage her don't lose heart and, and just a few tips for that mom uh, number one keep praying. You know the power of prayer. Moira, you're a prayer warrior.